a tower where different societies have forgotten how to communicate with each other, one brave traveler will make it their mission to learn all the languages and to re-establish relations between these peoples. My name is Lyle, welcome to Lyle's Indie Corner. Let's decode some symbols in Chants of Sennar. Developed by Rundisk and published by Focus Entertainment, Chance of Sennar is a language decoding puzzle game that was released on September 5th, 2023. Based on the Legend of Babel, you make your way up the tower and meet different peoples and need to learn their languages in order to get them to talk to each other again, to usher in a new age of peace. At first glance, Chance of Sennara can be a bit much for your eyes. It uses flat, bright colors and limited shading. But as soon as you dive in, you realize how amazing this, on the surface, simple style is to help convey the story of the game. Because what might seem overwhelming for a second really adjusts itself very quickly and gives you good impressions of every new area you enter. The simple color palette helps highlight what's important and gives your eyes lines to follow. But you soon also realize that this world is full of details which you might not expect at a glance. You gain so much information by simply looking at a mural and the color scheme helps define who a certain art piece belongs to. Every civilization in the tower has their own colors assigned to them, while overall it stays consistent in the design. I love when a world feels so well thought out and connected, even though the theme is division. Which brings me to the way the game distinguishes the different cultures. First is their general look, which is tied to their culture. Every one of these peoples have their own unique way of living, their way of dressing and, of course, their own language. You will experience all of it through observation and decoding will teach you what the makeup of each society is and the overarching lore that both divides and connects them. This all starts with the languages themselves. As I said, the setup of the story is that these people cannot communicate because they don't share a common language, which means that all of these have a unique look to them. Now, you're not decoding an alphabet here, but words, and these are represented by symbols that make up a given language. And these symbols are distinct for each civilization. While the Bard's language seems to be inspired by Arabic and Asian alphabets where symbols have flair and flow, the warrior's one looks much more Celtic in origin, many sharp edges and straight lines. Then there's the architecture, art and technology. Every new area will give you a different look and feel. So while you have brutalist architecture with the warriors, the alchemists have a European industrial flair. Mixed with a bit of sci-fi, but also a touch fantasy. You always know where you are by looking around and taking in the sights. There's no mistaking one society for another. But still, there's something that binds them all together, which the devs achieved through using the same art style and general coloring throughout their game. This is such an accomplishment. I absolutely fell in love with the look, even though I was a bit skeptical when I first saw the trailers. Way to get me on your side, run disc. The same can be said for the animations. At first I thought the running looked a bit funky, but once I got my hands on it, it just felt really smooth walking around at this speed. It was the right decision since some of these areas are quite large and you need to get around some to solve all the puzzles. So while it might look a bit weird, actually playing the game feels damn nice. Since Chance of Sonar is not exactly set in the real world, the sound design is a bit more stylized than it would be with the setting that's closer to ours. But it fits the art style perfectly. There's something a bit outlandish that's ever present in the game. In general, the ambient sound is amazing. You're always caught by a blanket of familiar sounds that will carry you through an area. Maybe it's a harsh wind on a cliff edge or warm chimes you discover in front of a shop. Just bustling voices in a busy square. The world feels very much alive through its sound sound design, and as with the visuals, every civilization has their own feel to them. There isn't a lot of copy and paste here. Sometimes every new screen comes with a new set of sounds, while never breaking your immersion. Even when it goes from a busy street to a rather silent one, it doesn't take you out of the game. It feels so natural. Good sound design can be make or break for a game, and in the case of Chance of Sennar, it definitely made parts of the game. There will be stretches when the sound will consist of barely more than your footsteps, but it just makes those areas stand out in exactly the right way. Because you've probably entered an area where no one has been for centuries, since it was forgotten by everyone. So you feel the absence of people and their 
their separation, all made possible by sound design. I love that stuff. The game gives such nice audible feedback when it comes to the puzzles too. Whenever you pick up new symbols and add them to your notebook, the little blip sound it makes tickles my brain in just the right way. Or when you find a new clue to a puzzle, there is an audio cue that plays which lets you know you're progressing. And once you finally solve it, the success jingle that plays is so pleasant, it'll give you the right amount of satisfaction. A lot of thought and work has gone into the sound design of the game, and you can tell. The music throughout Chance of Sinar is very understated, but in this case I think that's a good thing. This is first and foremost a puzzle game, and there is nothing more annoying than a looping soundtrack that urges you to go on, or a track that annoys you while you need time to think. The visuals, sound design and music give you something distinct for each of these civilizations, while keeping it in a cohesive style. It's very hard to explain, I can just say that no aspect ever felt out of place or inconsistent with the world as a whole. It really does feel like you're in an environment that's both entangled but estranged at the same time. This theme is palpable in every little corner of the game. What I was most surprised by was the absence of music. Chance of Sennara plays a lot with this. You will go minutes with without hearing a single note at points, but since the ambient sounds are so amazing, it will not feel like you're missing anything. And when music does come in, it feels natural and fun. Neither the absence nor the presence ever feels intrusive. It's another way the game gives you time and space to think. Of course, you have some musical cues at special events and those are very fun. And since the game isn't littered with them, they feel exceptional and you will remember them afterwards. Shout out to my editor, the Potato Witch! The main goal in Chance of Sonara is to decode the five different languages and through that reunite the people of the tower. What sounds like a straightforward task does need some serious brain power. At least for someone like me, who enjoys these kinds of games immensely but is not the brightest tool in the shed. Exploration is the first part of this adventure. As soon as you wake up, you're let loose on the first society you meet. The first obstacle you encounter is this simple switch and a sign beside it with two symbols. From the makeup of this and having at least a little bit of gamer brain, you probably can infer what these two symbols are representing. Your character will put these symbols down in their little handy notebook and then it's up to you to enter a word of what you think this symbol means. Now every time you encounter the symbol again, what you have typed in will show up instead of the simple dot 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 you had before. This will help give context clues about other words and symbols of course. You won't get your guesses right every time, at least I didn't, but that's not much of a problem. Because at one point, after you trigger certain events or collect enough symbols of a certain type, you will get the chance to decode a symbol for good. The main character will put down drawings in their notebook, depicting certain actions that represent words and now it's up to you to match these drawings to the symbols. You get three to four drawings per page and once you put them in correctly, these symbols are now fully available to you. There is a way to game the system a bit, which I had to do at points because, as I said, I'm not that good at puzzle games. If you are sure about maybe two of the symbols and their meaning, you can of course brute force the last symbol by just trying them out and you will get it right eventually. I guess the devs knew this would happen and are hopefully not too mad about it? There was also the issue of the drawings not being 100% clear at times. I had moments of confusion when I just didn't understand what a certain drawing was supposed to represent. Good thing then that you can game the decoding a little. What makes the decoding harder and harder when you go up the tower is an added layer of grammar or speech patterns. And while none of this is as complex as it would be for real life languages, it threw me for a loop once I realized that not every language is made up the same way. It's another cool little detail that the devs implemented and that added to the challenge. But other than the language stuff, there's also straight up logic puzzles. In order to succeed at these, you will need to understand at least certain parts of a given language. You can encounter puzzles early if you explore the environments thoroughly. And if you don't understand them, I would suggest just leaving them for a spell and coming back once you have a bit more of the language available to you. How these puzzles were distributed and solved reminded me a lot of Outer Wilds. That game also impressed me with how the puzzles made more and more sense the more you knew 
about the world. And while Outer Wilds is definitely bigger in scope, Chains of Sennar brought fun in exactly the same way. None of the puzzles weren't fair, at least in my opinion. They just had their solution hidden behind the languages, and that's such a cool way of keeping the player engaged. There's a third aspect to the gameplay, and that's these little shrines, for lack of a better word, you will encounter along the way. They both serve as fast travel points, and at each of these, there's another puzzle of sorts to solve. Every shrine has two people of different civilizations trying to communicate with one another. But since they cannot speak each other's languages, you need to function as an interpreter in order to get them to talk. These are pretty much the last stage of the game, and each time you finish one of these conversations, you will get the added bonus of seeing these people suddenly interacting and visiting one another. It's so cute and wholesome, and I'm in love with this game! I have been talking about the story throughout the review, and there isn't much to add without going into spoilers. To rehash, the Traveler wakes up at the lowest part of the tower and realizes that none of the people from different civilizations can communicate with one another. And it seems to be their destiny to bring them back together and bridge the gaps that have been left by centuries of disconnection. Why are we doing this? We don't know, but you will find out, I will give away that much. But other than that, I won't say much more about the story itself, because I want you to explore it for yourselves. I found it very wholesome, but it also threw me for a loop, which I was a big fan of. It's fun to have your expectations not quite pad out, and the subversion is very well done in Chance of Sedara. What I will talk a bit more on, though, is the lore that connects these peoples, even if they aren't aware of it. You will learn somewhat quickly that the people you meet first call themselves the devotees. It's not hard to see why. Spiritual imagery is all around this place. There is talk of God and priests and worship. The warriors, who are the occupants of the second layer of the tower, are aggressive towards the devotees and will not let them enter their realm. They call the devotees impures. Why and how, and the reason for why they call the birds, who live in the realm above theirs, chosen ones, you can explore for yourself if you pay attention to the meta story. But in general, you could say that the tower itself almost represents human history. It goes from a very religiously shaped society to a more advanced and scientifically oriented one, the higher you get. Another thing I really enjoyed while playing the game. There was division and strife in every age, but there are ways to get together despite our differences. As I said, this game is really wholesome. And while it doesn't exactly tackle current issues directly, there's definitely a melancholy that seems to represent the current division in the Western world. I really love Chance of Sennar. It's one of the best puzzle games out there. If you want more, why not check out my review of Tin Hearts? See you next time!